America is at war. Our fighting men are battling the enemy. In Asia, Africa, Europe, they seek out and smash the Axis despots. Yet the news is full of other warfare here at home. Sabotage of factories, laboratories, public utilities, all vital plants which make the tools of war. Trains which carry our supplies and troops, urgently needed in the war, are wrecked. Bridges are destroyed, ships are sunk, and convoys sent to the bottom. The men who do these deeds are cruel with heartless cunning. They work at night and spread their dangerous word through secret codes. This, then, is the story of the dreadful war within, of the flames which sweep over America. It's the story of sabotage, of the treacherous men who have broken our peace. It's the story of America's honor and justice and tolerance, and of one American, Dan Barton, who braved flames and fury and death to save it. What's the lowdown, sabotage? One note of the arson squad checks out. Killer Barton's missing. Now looked high and low for him. Those saboteurs must have got him. Was Dan Barton assigned to this job? Yes. Oh, we were talking with Barton not more than 15 minutes ago. He was lapping up coffee in Joe's diner, wasn't he, Gene? Yeah. Oh, what a yawn. Oh, Bill, don't turn in that story yet. Maybe Dan had a reason. Uh, I know you're stuck on Barton, but baby, this is red hot news. <laughs> Lieutenant Barton has persistently refused to explain his absence from his post, leaves no doubt in the board's mind that he is guilty of deliberate neglect of duty as charged. Were we at peace and not at war with a treacherous, vicious enemy, I would be inclined to be lenient because of Barton's previous record. This I cannot do. I have here a communication from Mr. Stover in Washington. He's insistent we make an example of Barton. Well, I knew there was something phony about this hearing. You're not making any official decisions, Commissioner. You're just an office boy taking orders from Stover, the publicity crazy big shot. Go ahead, throw me off the force. I'm through looking after other people. From now on, I'm looking after Dan Barton. Here. Send this to Stover with my compliments. Dan. Out of the way, you thick-headed splatfoot. Read all about it. Dan Barton fired from force. Commission ruled Barton guilty. Extra, Barton guilty. Have your position for a good waiter? There's nothing today, but let me see your union card for future reference. This way, please. Gentlemen, you were expecting, sir. There must be some mistake. Excuse my suspicion. We cannot be too careful. Not at all. I appreciate your caution. The Fuhrer sent me from Berlin with orders to aid you in your great work. But surely this little office is not headquarters. Oh, naturally not. Sit down. I'll take you there. just arrived from Berlin. Do you have any trouble getting into this country? The American Coast Guard is extremely vigilant. We had considerable difficulty getting our submarine past them. Secret code. Ma, 
marvelous machine. Decodes 20 times faster than the best manual operator. Bad news from Washington. Professor Clyde has. For your information, Clyde was appointed by the government to perfect a method for the manufacture of synthetic rubber. He has succeeded in developing a process far superior to anything we have in the fatherland. You realize what that means, don't you? If our tanks were equipped with this new rubber, they would last twice as long. Our mechanized panzer divisions could sweep our enemies off the face of the earth. What's happened? Our leader is about to speak. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler, do not let the matter of Professor Clyde disturb you. We'll attend to him at the proper time. You are all to be commended for your skill in bringing Project 41 to a successful conclusion. My latest information is that the South Gate munitions plant is a smoking ruin. Herr Felden, your arrival is most opportune. We shall have much work for you as Tyson's assistant. All of you must continue this work for the Fatherland. The day will soon come when our Fuhrer will dictate the terms of peace from the White House. Hello, Mr. Stevens. How are you? I'm glad you dropped in, Stover. The President wished me to congratulate you for the progress you made in combating sabotage. Oh, thanks. Have you had any luck in cracking the saboteur's secret code? That code is defined over a department in Washington. But I'm working on a new angle that I think will lead us directly to the head of the organization. Now, for your own information, we're flying Professor Glad to the West Coast. He'll start production on his new rubber process immediately. He'll be well guarded? I'm not taking any chances. I'm going with him myself. Thanks. Excellent, Stover. Goodbye. Goodbye. Don't tell me the great Stover hasn't time to talk to reporters. Windbag Stover. The man with two hobbies, getting his picture in the paper and framing people. You want a headline? Well, how's this? Dan Barton sucks Stover and knows. Damn, for the love of sanity, what's wrong with you? Aren't you in enough trouble already? When I want advice from you, I'll ask for it. Well, that's no way to talk, Dan. We're only trying to help. I'll go peddle your papers. Dan, we've been friends a long time, but this is the end. Get your things out of the apartment before I throw them out. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't expect that from him. Don't let it worry you, Sergeant. There's a car waiting outside. We're stopping at the Garland Hotel, sir. have timed it better. The whole street is deserted. Where do we go? In the alley. The professor's room opens directly on the fire escape at the third floor. Put that away. We'll have the whole police force on our hands. But he's heading for Clyde's room. He's got to come back this way, doesn't he? Same fellow who tried to attack Stover at the airport. 
Do you think that the leader cares about him? Or he wants a disintegrate robber process? Yeah. As soon as they leave, we'll have to explain to him why we didn't get it. Over. You came here to sweat me, you're out of luck. I'm not going to... Pipe down, Barton. You better let me stay and keep an eye on him, Mr. Stover. It won't be necessary. I've handled tougher ones than this. I'll let you know when I want to get out. Barton, I'm not going to waste any time on you. You're going to sing and sing loud. I'll get the truth out of you if I have to beat it out of you with a club. Dan. Hello, Chief. You said they made a tough egg out of me. Well, I had to, Dan. There's still time to call it off if you want. Not on your life. When you gave me this job, you said it had to be done. I'm sticking with it until I hook up with these Nazis and find out their secret code. Good. But remember, you'll have to break all the rules. Pull crooked deals, even help them with their dirty work, until you accomplish your purpose. I made a pretty good start, haven't I? Did you plant that story about the missing papers? Yes, every sheet in town covered it. Good. That ought to draw them to me like flies when I break out of here. Where can I meet you? I'll be at the Lake Cottage. Take care of yourself, Dan, and good luck. Take care of yourself, Chief. I'm in a spot if anything happens to you. Attention all cars. Attention all cars. Special bulletin 842. Be on the lookout for Dan Barton. Dan Barton, wanted for jailbreak. Description of fugitive. Height, five feet, 11 and a half inches. Color of eyes, brown. Color of hair, brown. You didn't waste any time. Good evening, Lieutenant Barton. Who are you? Shall we say just innocent witnesses to your brutal murder of this unfortunate man? Well, it looks like you beat me to it. It will be very difficult for you to make the police believe that. Put your hands flat on a desk. Do it carefully so your fingerprints will be clear. going where we can sit and have a quiet little chat. Yes, sir. You have a good book on preparedness? Right this way. Here? They're sweating someone they brought in. I think what you want is right here. You expect me to believe that? Project number 50 is ready. Fine. Go inside and prepare it. For the last time, 
What have you done with the missing page of the rubber process? And for the last time, I'm telling you, I don't talk to stooges. Get me in touch with your boss, I'll tell him. If you'll step in, gentlemen, I'll demonstrate that nothing is impossible to our leader. Kido, you stay here and keep our friend company. Professor Clyde has been given a laboratory at the Richland Oil Refinery. The entire plant is surrounded by the new listening wire fence that is considered impassable. Well, for the purpose of demonstration, these wires represent the fence. And on the desk is a miniature of the indicator installed at the guardhouse of the plant. Approach to any section of the fence is instantly reported on that indicator. That hand indicates the exact section of the fence that is approached. Furthermore, any sound made near the fence is instantly heard in the guardhouse. Now let me show you how we can offset their system. What goes on in there, Hirohito? Do you mind if I walk around a little bit? Not to get up, please. to carry out Project 50. Excellent. Has Barton talked yet? No, sir. He refuses to talk to anyone but you. That will come later. Keep him well guarded in the meantime. It's important we get those other papers of the rubber process. Don't worry, sir. I don't think he'll do very much moving around for the next five or six hours. Hi, Littler. Drink to our future success. Kido. Poor fellow. He doesn't seem to hold his liquor very well. He'll remain like this for quite some time. We have to hurry. Kito. Go to headquarters and tell the men to meet us at the Richland Oil Refinery. Keep under cover on your way there. These Americans are very unimaginative about their prison camps.
Well, hello, Jeannie. Hello, Pat. I'm sorry I'm late, but I just got your message. What's up? I'm packing up all Dan's things. I gotta take him over to the office. I thought you might like this picture in your letters back. What'll they do to Dan if they catch him? They'll throw the book at him. Well, what on earth is that? Well, that? That's something Dan and I was working on. A uniform for night fighters like those British fellows, the commanders. You mean commando? <laughs> Commandos, commanders, it's all the same to me. Well, I've got to get back to the paper, but I'll keep in touch with you. Fine. Oh, Pat, tell me something. What would you do if you ran into Dan right now? I've been thinking about that. Last night, I did my duty and took him in. All day, I felt like a Judas. But if I saw him now, I'd take him in again. Well, you're an honest cop, Pat, and I admire you for it. Good night. Good night, Jeannie. Did you mean that about taking me in? Dan! Yes, I'm not a Dan, you're under arrest. Hold it! Stop, Dan, or I'll shoot. I'm not stopping. Don't be a fool. Listen, Pat, you caught me pulling a clumsy burglary. I didn't have to be caught, you ought to know that. I did it on orders from Stover. Why? Because he wanted me to be discredited, so that I could get on the inside with these spies and saboteurs who were trying to wreck the country. But Stover told me that. He can't. He's dead. Murdered. Oh, Pat, you've got to believe me. The men who killed Stover are part of the gang we're after. If you were to take me in now, it would ruin everything. My only chance of clearing myself is to round them up, including their leader. Right now, they're on their way to the Richland Oil Refinery. Professor Clyde's out there working on that synthetic rubber process. What's that got to do with us? Well, don't you see? We've got to stop them. I came here for your help. And for that commando outfit. Pat, after all these years together, don't you believe me? Don't you trust me? It's no use, Dan. I gotta take you in. Well, you'll have to shoot first. Because I'm not going in any other way. I can't do it. I gotta believe you. Good. You won't have any doubts when we stop those ratsies at the refinery. I'll explain everything as we go along. Good night, Professor. Good night. Here's your cab, sir. Thank you. Please caution all the watchmen not to enter my laboratory. Those three tanks on the floor are filled with a deadly liquid gas. Highly explosive. Ah, don't you worry, Professor. I'll warn them. You go home and get a good night's sleep. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. It will start in 30 seconds. You stand by here. All right, men. The gate. That's right. your rubber gloves, you chump. Want to cook yourself? Come on, work faster. Get that wire cut. We've been tricked. Back to the... through that safe like a hot knife through butter.
Miss it. Hold it. I'll take those. for the saboteurs. And now we shall visit the office of Major Henry Burton, U.S. Army Intelligence. Hello, folks. I'm Major Henry Burton of the Military Intelligence. I brought you into my office to tell you all I can about codes and secret writing. You and I, of course, can communicate with one another openly and above board. But our nation's enemies, working in our midst, must use codes. I hope to show you how to intercept and solve these codes, as well as to invent some of your own. You'll have fun while doing this, and you will also be helping your country. And everyone should learn all he can about how the enemy works. In working out codes, we have found that certain letters in the alphabet appear more frequently than others. Thus, in every message of 100 letters, E will appear approximately 13 times. T will be found about 10 times, and so on. Of course, this proportion will vary with different messages, but on the average, these letters will be used most frequently. Now, here we have a secret code message which was intercepted by one of our men. Let's try to solve it by using our frequency chart. Taking note that the letters J, F, and why are used most frequently. Now, one of these should represent E. The other two are apt to be either T or A. Now, everyone interested in either making or solving secret codes should have a set of slides similar to these. Of course, the ones you make at home need not be as large, but the principle should be the same. Let me show you how they work. Now, you will notice there are three J's in this message. Now, we always assume, remember, that the letter used most frequently in any code message is E. Now, in this message, there are other letters which appear as frequently as the code J. But we've got to start somewhere, so we might as well assume that J is meant to be E. J, E. Now, the first word in this message is F, Y, Y, F, H, P. And by using our slides, we find that F is A. Y is T, T, A, H, C, P, K. Attack. And that clearly is a word. And I think we've hit on the solution of this code on the first guess. Now, by going ahead with this same method, we get E, M, E, M, Y. At O, M, C, E. Attack enemy at once. Now, by reversing the alphabet on one of the slides, or by substituting numbers or other symbols, 
You can make yourself an endless variety of codes. And if you come back next week, I'll show you the rail fence code, one of the first ever used by the United States Army. Don't fail to see Shadow of the Swastika, Chapter 2 of the Secret Code. There must be some mistake. Excuse my suspicion. We cannot be too careful. Not at all. I appreciate your caution. The Fuhrer sent me from Berlin with orders to aid you in your great work. But surely this little office is not headquarters. Oh, naturally not. Sit down. I'll take you there. from Berlin. Did you have any trouble getting into this country? The American Coast Guard is extremely vigilant. We had considerable difficulty getting our submarine past them. Secret code. machine decodes 20 times faster than the best manual operator. Bad news from Washington. Professor Clyde has. For your information, Clyde was appointed by the government to perfect a method for the manufacture of synthetic rubber. He has succeeded in developing a process far superior to anything we have in the fatherland. You realize what that means, don't you? If our tanks were equipped with this new rubber, they would last twice as long. Our mechanized panzer divisions could sweep our enemies off the face of the earth. What's happened? Our leader is about to speak. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler, do not let the matter of Professor Clyde disturb you. We'll attend to him at the proper time. You are all to be commended for your skill in bringing Project 41 to a successful conclusion. My latest information is that the Southgate munitions plant is a smoking ruin. Herr Felden, your arrival is most opportune. We shall have much work for you as Tyson's assistant. All of you must continue this work for the Fatherland. The day will soon come when our Fuhrer will dictate the terms of peace from the White House. Hello, Mr. Stevens. How are you? I'm glad you dropped in, Stover. The president wished me to congratulate you for the progress you made in combating sabotage. Oh, thanks. Have you had any luck in cracking the saboteur secret code? That code is defined over a department in Washington. But I'm working on a new angle that I think will lead us directly to the head of the organization. Now, for your own information, we're flying Professor Clyde to the West Coast. He'll start production on his new rubber process immediately. He'll be well guarded? I'm not taking any chances. I'm going with him myself. Thanks. Excellent, Stover. Goodbye. Goodbye. Don't tell me the great Stover hasn't time to talk to reporters. Winberg Stover. The man with two hobbies, getting his picture in the paper and framing people. You want a headline? Well, how's this? Dan Barton socks Stover and knows. Damn, for the love of sanity, what's wrong with you? Aren't you in enough trouble already? Well, I want advice from you, I'll ask for it. Well, there's no way to...
America is at war. Our fighting men are battling the enemy. In Asia, Africa, Europe, they seek out and smash the Axis despots. Yet the news is full of other warfare here at home. Sabotage of factories, laboratories, public utilities, all vital plants which make the tools of war. Trains which carry our supplies and troops urgently needed in the war are wrecked. Bridges are destroyed. Ships are sunk and convoys sent to the bottom. The men who do these deeds are cruel with heartless cunning. They work at night and spread their dangerous word through secret codes. This, then, is the story of the dreadful war within, of the flames which sweep over America. It's the story of sabotage, of the treacherous men who have broken our peace. It's the story of America's honor and justice and tolerance, and of one American, Dan Barton, who braved flames and fury and death to save it. What's the lowdown, sabotage? Talk, Dan, we're only trying to help. I'll go peddle your papers. Dan, we've been friends a long time, but this is the end. Get your things out of the apartment before I throw them out. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't expect that from him. Don't let it worry you, Sergeant. There's a car waiting outside. We're stopping the Garland Hotel, sir. have timed it better. The whole street is deserted. Where do we go? In the alley. The professor's room opens directly on the fire escape at the third floor. Put that away. We'll have the whole police force on our hands. But he's heading for Clyde's room. He's got to come back this way, doesn't he? Arson squad checks up. The killer Barton is missing. Now look high and low for him. Those saboteurs must have got him. Was Dan Barton assigned to this job? Yes. Oh, we were talking with Barton not more than 15 minutes ago. He was lapping up coffee in Joe's diner, wasn't he, Gene? Yeah. Oh, what a yawn. Oh, Bill, don't turn in this story yet. Maybe Dan had a reason. Uh, I know you're stuck on Barton, but baby, this is red hot news. <laughs> that Lieutenant Barton has persistently refused to explain his absence from his post leaves no doubt in the board's mind that he is guilty of deliberate neglect of duty as charged. Were we at peace and not at war with a treacherous, vicious enemy, I would be inclined to be lenient because of Barton's previous record. This I cannot do. I have here a communication from Mr. Stover in Washington. He's insistent we make an example of Barton. Well, I knew there was something phony about this hearing. You're not making any official decisions, Commissioner. You're just an office boy taking orders from Stowe for the publicity crazy big shot. Go ahead, throw me off the force. I'm through looking after other people. From now on, I'm looking after Dan Barton. Here. Send this to Stover with my compliments. Dan. Out of the way, you thick-headed flatfoot. Read all about it. Dan Barton fired from force. Commission ruled Barton guilty. Extra, Barton guilty. Read all 
have your position for a good waiter. There's nothing today, but let me see your union card for future reference. This way, please. The gentleman you were expecting, sir.